Can you tell if your garden bed soil is kaputz or needs replenishing? Well, you should, because without well-structured and fertile garden soil, it's pretty difficult to grow a ton or nice, healthy crops of veg. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I'm gonna give you a bunch of tips on how to tell if your garden soil needs replenishing and what to do about it. Let's get into it. So to demonstrate refurbishing of garden beds, I'm going to refurbish these four garden beds here. And they do need refurbishing. I'm not just doing it for nothing. But before we do that, and I've said do, way too many times. There are two things that I want to do, and that is discuss ways or reasons why they do need refurbishing, so the signs and symptoms of those beds. And the second thing I want to do is put this hat on because the sun here in Australia today is so hot, I'm getting burnt like a lobster on a Croatian barbecue. So the first thing I want to bring up is the actual soil itself. Often garden soil, when it needs refurbishing, is too light, it's too sandy, it's depleted. That's the most common scenario and that's the scenario here. So in this case, you wanna think about adding something to this bed to make the structure better because weak sandy soil like this isn't good for holding water. So you'd have to water the bed more often and watering too often washes nutrients away from the plants. So you really don't want to do that and having to water often isn't great. And if you forget to water, it dries out too quick. The plants go into stress, then they need a drink, then they go into stress and then they're happy they have a drink, then they go into stress and they're not able to just access that water over a prolonged period. And it's not great structure for those plants to keep their roots down and to remain upright and to grow well. So there are a number of problems with light soil like this. And it's not just the top few centimeters either. I can dig down and I can see that this sandy stuff is all the way through. But the other thing you can come across, which is usually unusual, is heavy soil and I've done this before myself could be you've added too much nutrients to the bed you might have added too much cow manure or horse manure or too much fresh compost and manure together and you've overloaded the bed and it's got really heavy all the soil that you're using or you grabbed from somewhere was full of a lot of clay and it became really sticky and heavy. Well, in that odd case, you might find that the only way to cure that bed is to either remove some of it, because it could just get too heavy, and then replace it with some compost and organic matter and some gypsum that helps break down the particles of the clay or the heaviness, and mix that in. Organic matter, gypsum is the best way to go. Removing some of the soil, and then replacing it with some other soil is fine, but I wouldn't advise throwing sand or light soil into clay. All you'll get is probably more clay because that doesn't tend to break up the particles as well as organic compost and gypsum put together. That does a better job in my opinion. Another time you might want to consider refurbishing or replenishing your garden soil is when you get new garden soil. Never ever expect that new premium garden soil from a garden or landscaping center is actually really good stuff. I've made that mistake before and the fact is that a lot of garden places will sell just ordinary soil mixed with a bit of chicken or cow manure or horse manure and they'll call it premium when in fact it's just not that at all. It's rubbish soil mixed with manure and that doesn't last very long and it really doesn't grow very good veg. But doesn't matter because you can always turn crappy soil into beautiful rich garden soil. You just have to take time and a bit of effort. And I can give you a really good example in this garden bed over here that I filled up from garden soil that I had over many years. So this is only a new bed, 
but the garden soil in here is garden soil that I've had for a long time. So come and have a look. Now the soil on top here might not be as much chopped because it's weathered a little bit, but that's not a problem. Most of the few centimetres of topsoil on any bed can get a bit weathered, but if I just dig down slightly here, you can see the difference in structure from that other bed that I just showed you. Check it out. It's moist, even though it's been watered exactly the same amount as the other bed, it's moist and it's crumbly, sticks together just enough, it's got good structure, it's got good organic matter all the way through it, it's got little rocks and all these types of minerals and nice beautiful goodies through it. That is good garden soil. So just because you get it from a garden centre, it doesn't mean that it's going to be fantastic and you're going to be able to grow a ton of veg in it. Always check that soil out and make sure that it is what they say it is. And if it isn't, well then just go through that period like I'm doing now of gradually improving that soil. Another reason for refurbishing your soil could be a really long growing season, such as these carrots here and this celerac. I've had them growing in here for months and months now. It's been a really long season coming through our winter into our summer and the bed really is depleted. Even if the soil looked pretty good structural wise, I know that the soil in this bed needs at least some more nutrients and some extra organic matter and, and fertile elements added to it in order to rejuvenate it and get it back up to a standard that I could put another crop in there. You don't get something for nothing and the reason why you're always topping up raised garden beds like this is because there are always things getting taken out of it. There's nutrients taken out of it, there's soil taken out of it when you do the weeding, there's compaction, there's lots of things that contribute to taking the nutrients and structure out of that soil. So every season practically, especially after a big crop of veggies, it needs some sort of rejuvenation. And how much? Well, I'll go through a bit of that later on. The other thing you can tell when a bed needs rejuvenating is how well are the plants doing. If the plants have slowed down and it's still an appropriate season for them to grow and they're growing as good as they could be, well, the likelihood is the soil isn't as good as it should be. So observing the growth of your plants in the garden can give you a good indication of whether or not that soil needs some work. Another way to tell if your soil needs rejuvenation is by simply digging down, sometimes a, a foot or so, looking for worms and other animals, any signs of life. A good garden soil is full of life. It's a living organism itself. Fungi, animals, worms, all sorts of things. And if it's looking pretty bare, well then it's a sign that it's not a great medium to grow your veg in. And the last reason to tell when a bed might need rejuvenating is when you haven't used it for a while. You might have left the bed rest for a, a number of months. It's getting some weeds and even grasses, some yucky nut grass through this one, which is difficult to get out. But that came with the soil, that poor soil that I put in here and I made that error. But regardless, we're gonna fix this up. And so if you've got a bed that has been resting for quite a while, resting beds is good because it can itself give that soil a rest from activity and nutrients getting sucked out of it. But after that rest, you might find, especially if you have other plants take hold like weeds and grasses, you might need to rejuvenate the soil that's in the bed. So what can you do? Well, it's easy. All you need to do to refurbish garden beds like this that need it is to add a few things. And what I like to do is add manure. I've got a trail load of cow manure right there. And that's going to add some excellent structure to those beds without over potently 
fertilizing them and putting too much nutrients in there. But I'm gonna put a whole bunch of cow manure, maybe even most of that trailer in these four beds and mix it in. The other thing you can do is add compost. Your own homemade compost is good, but if you have to buy some, you can do that. I probably won't be adding any compost today. I haven't got enough and I'm still making a whole batch. So I'll leave that for now and I'm probably just gonna add the cow manure. Later on, I might add some extra nutrients like some extra fertilizer, maybe a little bit of chicken fertilizer, chicken manure, chicken pellets, just to give it a extra nitrogen boost. But I'll see first of all. My main aim will be to take the weeds out salvage any plants I can. So let's get stuck into it. So that's the four beds done, de-weeded, everything pulled out. I've salvaged a few things, some carrot seed from those French carrots. They're gonna be absolutely great to grow again. I love them. And there's even a few after all this time, must be, I don't know, eight or nine months of growing. This one is still quite edible. Some spring onions, that'll be nice. And also some asparagus pea that I noticed was coming up, little seedlings. And uh, it's good to keep an eye out when you're refurbishing garden beds because you never know when you might come across little seedlings that are just taking off, are starting to grow, and then you can replant them somewhere else. Right, so I've got manure behind me, some cow manure, and we're going to spread that in the beds next. Right, so that's the four beds filled up generously with some manure, cow manure. And you don't have to do it generously like this if your beds don't need it. If you needed to just use a little bit because your soil was like I showed over there, quite good, but just depleted slightly and you were gonna grow another crop in there, well then you could just sprinkle some fertilizer around and then put the plants in. That's fine, the soil structure's good, everything's good. You don't need to go overboard. But in this case, they needed a big lot of poop, a whole lot of dung, a whole lot of doodah in there, heaps of it. We don't leave it like that, because if I just left it like that in the sun, especially this sun, it'd just get a crust on top and it'd get really hard and it actually depletes. Dig it in, mix it in with the, probably the top eight inches or so of the soil, just mix it in a bit. That'll let the worms come up and the microbes and the other little animals absorb it and churn it and, and create and meld it into the bed more and easier rather than just leaving it on top to dry into a crust and go all hard and yucky. So that, that's the first thing. And then the next thing I'll do is I'm gonna mulch these beds with some sugarcane mulch, nice and thick, so that will suppress any weeds and grasses from growing up through, and it keeps it moist underneath and a nice cool environment for those microbes and those worms to work their magic under there. Just like that. See how I'm just digging and then pushing? Just mixing it in like you're mixing a big cake of poop. Well, 
So there we go. There's the four beds, all replenished. We've got the manure that's been dug in, and now we've got the mulch on top. Whew. What I'll do is I'll leave those beds like that. There's a big, thick layer of mulch on top of that as well. That should just help to let everything mature under there. And I'll leave it mature for at least two months. And that should bring us into our new growing season, the winter growing season here, which is a bit like the spring growing season in the colder places of the world, you know, in the temperate or cold climates. Our winter or autumn winter is good for growing those beautiful greens like cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, peas and those type of sort of standard greens that everybody loves. So that should coincide nicely in that season after about eight weeks or so and you sh I will give you a look at that. Don't worry about that. I'll give you a look after a couple of months before I start planting out and you'll see the way those beds have matured and hopefully we can grow a ton of veg in those new beds all refurbished up. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. I mean, I was arms deep in animal manure for four hours. It wasn't easy, but I love it. Absolutely loved it. So uh, yeah, thumbs up, it'd be nice. Share the video around and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.